Thank you, Jesus. How's everybody doing this morning? Blessed, blessed. Blessed and highly favored. Somebody said, mighty fine. <laughs> I'm grateful, amen. I'm grateful, amen. blessed, and highly favored, all of that, amen. Amen. I just we can stand again for prayer. I'm going to get one. Everybody's ready here. God is yet on the throne. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for giving me another opportunity to preach and teach your word. I pray, Lord, that the words that you've given to me, O oh God, will be a blessing to those that are here. And even those that are not here, Lord, who will replay the message later on today. And we will pray for those who are watching us right now by the internet. We pray, Lord, that the word of God will strengthen us today. I pray that it will comfort us and encourage us. And Lord, also open up our hearts and our minds, O oh God, for what the Spirit is saying today. And Lord, as we look into your word... Help us to see and behold wondrous things out of your word today, Lord. Help us to receive revelation from your word that, that we didn't see before, Lord. And Father, even as the word is being taught, Lord, let healings and signs and wonders and miracles take place. Father, let this word touch each and every one of us in a special way, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Before I get started, I just... I want to just read a scripture uh, this morning, a couple of scriptures, as a matter of fact, because we are living in some perilous times, amen. And um, now I can see more and more why God told me a couple of years ago to pray for the church, that the church would have the spirit of discernment, because there are many voices out there, amen. And just a week ago, I asked the Lord, what did he want me to start preaching? And he told me to start preaching on the healthy church. And I believe that one of the reasons why in each time I preached the word of God, God began to show me uh, more and more things as to why he put me on certain subjects. And we're living in a time where um, I was just down here at the church yesterday. I like, sometimes I like to just come by myself and just, just think and let God speak to me. And I can understand more and more why Jesus was telling the Jews um, before Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. He, they wanted to know the signs of his coming. And, you know, just like a lot of us, we want to know the signs of God's coming. God, the, the days, uh, we are closer now to the return of Christ than at any other time in history. So it's a, it's a great time, it's a wonderful time, but if you're not a serious Christian, I pray for you. I really prayed for you. Amen. I even prayed for myself. You know how certain scriptures Jesus said um, that if it wasn't for him coming, the elect would even make it. Amen. And God is showing us even through the pandemic that he lets us see where we stand in Christ. And and there's a lot of areas as Christians we, we didn't stand. We, we're not taking a stand and we're being deceived and misled in many, many ways. I can hear it coming out of the voice of Christians, but the Lord is telling me you better learn to be like the angel was when Joshua came to the angel and the angel told Joshua, I'm for truth. So we better be in the party of truth. Amen. Parties come and parties, they go. The Democratic Party, the Republican Party, they change. People change in those parties. But if we're not uh, bent on truth, we're going to be deceived in these last days. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, we're already being deceived. Deception is already among us. Amen. And I pray that God will open our eyes. Uh, look what Jesus said in uh, Matthew 24. I'm just going to, this is not the foundational text. I just want to. Read. I was, I was, I'm so serious about this. I was saying, Lord, if I can't handle the persecution, 
that's going to not allow me to be around. Amen. Because you're going to be really, really tested in the upcoming years for your faith as a Christian. I'm praying that the fivefold ministers, the apostles and the prophets, if they're really apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers, we should be teaching the same thing, amen? And, and you know, it might not be worded the same way, but we should be saying the same thing because we're all drinking from the same fountain, amen? And so it's time for us as fivefold ministers to really get the church back on its proper course, being solid in the faith. Amen. Yeah. Um, Matthew 24, it says, um, as Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings. And, but he responded, do you see all these buildings? I tell you the truth. They will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of the temple. Verse 3, in Matthew 24, 3 says, Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us when all this will happen. What sign will signal your return at the end of the world? Verse 4, Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming that I am the Messiah. Many people are going to come in the name of Jesus Christ. There are going to be many this already happened, like I said last week, the Antichrist spirit is already here. The Antichrist spirit is a spirit that's against Christianity, against everything that the biblical model of Christianity says. Amen. And so he said there's going to be many preachers, many preachers saying that I'm a Christian. Many pre pre preachers are going to be preaching that they're going to be behind in Christian churches, preaching from the pulpit, but they're not really Christ because they're preaching another gospel. They're preaching another gospel other than the Word of God, and they're not standing on the Word of God. Amen. And so we are living in those some wonderful times, but we, 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 we got some trying times that are ahead of us. And if you're really a Christian or a preacher, you, your, your faith is going to be tested. Can I get amen? amen? And so I pray that we all stay prayed up. I remember the songs that I prayed that we all, uh, what it says? Pray that we all be ready. That's a song that I that was sung many years ago. I pray that we all be ready. I pray that we really begin to take our, our faith serious. We we've been looking at other countries and other nations on on how they're being persecuted from, for their faith. And we on family night we've already we've watched how other nations and other countries are being persecuted and they stood on their faith. But in America we don't know what it means to really. Um, stand for Christ, but I tell you, um, God has been holding some things back from this nation, but this nation, uh, if, if God don't allow what happened to this nation, what happened to other nations in the Bible, he owes them other nations an apology. Amen. Because they were wicked, just as wicked as America is becoming. Amen. And we know that we serve a just God. God, this is a praying nation, but if we don't begin to pray and cry out, the president can't help you. No leader can really help you. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that if my people will call by my name. So the power to change and transform nations is in the hand of Christians. Are y'all with me? Do y'all realize that? The power to change and transform nations is in the hands of Christians. Can I get amen? amen? See, we read the Bible, but now when we start to read the Bible, we're going to start understanding more and more what the Bible was saying. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Remember when we read Scripture, it says that they said Elijah was the chariot of the nation of Israel. In other words, he was such a strong, powerful prophet who, who prayed and things happened in the earth realm, he was greater than the chariot and the war and horses and all the other things. He was the power of the nation because he warred in the spirit. Can I get amen? amen? See, our prayers are more powerful than we think and even can imagine. It's time for us to start praying. It's not time for us to slack up on our prayers. Amen. 
And then, in, um, look what Jesus went on to say. He said, in verse 6, He said, And you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only what the first of the birth pains with more to come. And also he, he compared to a woman uh, having contraction before birth. She had many birth pains before that baby is born. Amen. And a lot of Christians going to during these times of birth pains, these contractions coming, a lot of them, a lot of them already fallen by the wayside. A lot of Christians already renounced the faith. A lot of Christians have already walked away from Christ. See, when you test it, you're going to either go toward Christ if you're strong in the faith, or you're going to walk away from Christ if you're not strong in the faith. Amen. And so in verse 42, he said, So you too must keep watch. For you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly what a, when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready at the time. For the Son of Man will come at the least expected. When we least expect it. Amen. Anybody ever known a, a burglar or somebody going to break in your house ever told you what time he was coming? If he was, if he told you that, you'd be prepared for it, right? Amen. And so Jesus is telling us, you know, we need to get ourselves right. We need to get our hearts right. We need to be ready when he comes because we got some perilous times coming, whether we want to admit it or not. Amen. Only the, the, those who are faithful and solidly in their faith is going to stand the test of time. Let's get amen. amen. Now. I want to get to the subject today. Um, the title of our lesson is The Healthy Church. The Healthy Church. And so it ties right in what I just read. Only a healthy church, and we're going to go over what a healthy church is and what a healthy church looks like. And as I said last week, you can never determine a healthy church by numbers. How many people in the church? Because the Bible says you can have the, the, the form of godliness but denying his power. Can I get amen? amen? And so that's what's um, fooling a lot of people that just you can't go by numbers, you can't go by mega churches because uh, most of the people in the, in the mega church, if you really looked at it from, from God's perspective, uh, you have great numbers, but you have small faith. Amen. And so we, like we said last week, you can tell a healthy church by, by, by the book of Acts, what they began to do. They they When they began to to, to do the signs and the wonders and the miracles and all this stuff taking place. They were growing to be a healthy church. They never really made it to be all that they were supposed to be. Because in, in time, you know, what they call the period of dark ages, the church relapsed. And now God is, is, is waking up churches again. And he wants us to build what? Strong, healthy churches. And so the fivefold ministers, we have a task before us. We got to restore God's foundation of truth to this generation so that we can have a healthy, strong church that's prepared for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I get amen? Amen. And I'm going to quote this because I've been on this, you know, in this duction for a while this morning. Uh, Third John 2, he tells us what he said, I wish that you would prosper and do what? Be in good health, even as your soul prosper, right? And so God desires the same thing, not only for individuals, but He, he requires the same thing for churches. He wants us to prosper and be in good health. That means, like I said last week, He wants us to prosper spiritually, He wants us to prosper financially, and He wants us to prosper socially. God is concerned about your total being. Every A healthy church is not a church that's caught up just in the spiritual realm. We're supposed to be blessed going in, blessed coming out. And that's what God was trying to convey to us in Deuteronomy 28 when he was saying blessed going in, blessed coming out. 
He wanted the, the Israelites to know if you belong to God, you're supposed to be blessed in every area of your life, your finances. You're supposed to be blessed in your health. But so often in this day and time, we preach a gospel that's unbalanced. Tell your neighbor, it's time to get back to balance. It's time to become healthy again. Amen? If you feed a church too much sweets, uh, too much candy, then what the teeth, uh, if you give a kid too much candy, his teeth begin to rot, right? So the churches in the body of Christ, a lot of times we've been preaching uh, on one side too much. We were preaching either too much about finances or too much about God blessing you with things, but we never keep it balanced. We never keep it in the middle of the road, so to speak. So that's not healthy. Can I get amen? Amen. And so we we talking about the healthy church and um, we said last, let's go to, um, I want to get some different scriptures today as a foundation of the text. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11. And um, just for the sake of time, I got it. I'm going to read it because I don't want to be before it too long. I want to really um, just get it started again today. I don't want to go too far into this message because um, I really want to just take my time today and... Um, the Lord is telling me just take the time because we got people that really, really need to know what a healthy church is so they can be prepared for the things that are coming uh, down the road and around the curve. And however you want to say it, but we need to get prepared. Uh, we need to get prepared. prepared. Um, Hebrews uh, 5.11, look what he said. There is much more we would like to say about this. But it is difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull don't, and, and don't seem to listen. So he was saying, the Apostle Paul, you know, you got theological schools that don't think this is Apostle Paul. But I believe Apostle Hebrews is written by Apostle Paul. And so to speak, even if it was, let's listen to what he was saying. Uh, he was saying that there are some things that he wanted to, to push the church on to become more healthy but you can't become a healthy church until what you get into your spirit and you understand what is already being taught. And so the church, Paul, Paul was a little upset. He was like, I, I wanna, there's some things that I really want to teach the church and I really want to go, want you to go further in your faith, but you're not ready for it yet. And God is saying the same thing in the body of Christ. The church began to do great things uh, 2,000 years ago when the church was first birth, but we, we relapsed. We went back into the basic things and, and we got to start all over again to, to, to get back into what God really wants us to do. And, and there's so much more that God really wants to speak to us. There's so much more that includes our faith, but we haven't, we, we're not there yet. There's new dimensions and new understanding in God that He wants us to get to, but we're not spiritually mature to get there yet as a whole, the majority of the church. Remember when Moses told the Lord, he said, show me your ways, right? So God, he, even if he showed us some things and we're not prepared for, we want to understand the new dimensions that God want to take us to. There's, there's a greater level of understanding and revelation that God want to give to the body of Christ, but we are not ready. Amen. And then he went on to say in verse 12, he said, You have been believers so long that you ought to be teaching others Instead, you need to teach someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. That's not a healthy church, is it? And they did greater things. A lot of these churches, they had began to do, but they still were had not what? They had not reached the help being the, completely healthy like Apostle Paul wanted them. We're supposed to constantly be Growing in the things of God, but I, I see so many of us Christians, we are reverting back to our old ways and we're losing our faith. We allow small things to shake us in our faith. And one day we have faith, one day we don't have faith, one day we're for God and one day we're not with God. One day we're trusted in God and the next day we're trusted in man. And we are so, that's all of the signs of an unhealthy church. Amen. And the church, like I said last week, it is made up of individuals. Individual. And I said a church can never be as strong as only the weakest person in that church. Amen. 
And so we have to help each other and keep each other lifted up and, and help each other to, to go on to what? Advancing our relationship and advancing in our faith uh, toward the things of God. Amen. And verse 13 said, this is a teaching moment today. Amen. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant. And doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature. Who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. There's a spirit of discernment. See God wants us to be, become so spiritually mature and so healthy in our understanding and our relationship with God. That we, we, we begin to look through uh, the confusion of the moment. In other words, let me give you an illustration. You can listen to Fox News. You can listen to CBS. You can listen to MSBC and all the other radio stations. But I mean, television stations. But when you hear all of it, then you say, "Lord, what are you saying?" Because all of those stations, all of those stations are teaching propaganda. All of those stations are teaching propaganda. They're trying to get you to see things from their, their perspective. But if you're not spiritually mature and, and, and have a relationship with God, you won't understand what they're saying. They'll have you going. Uh, East when you think you're going west. They'll have you going south when you think you're going north. But only a discerning person, only a person who has a relationship with God can look through the confusion of the moment. And if you're not spiritually mature, you'll be going after parties. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I'm for Christ. I don't belong to none of those parties. Amen. And so when you become spiritually mature, you look at these parties like, Hey, what, what can you do for my community? What have you done for us? You don't, you don't, you, you have to, if those parties are going to work, you got to make them work for you. You don't just get caught up in one political party. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. That's confusion. That comes from the enemy. Don't ever allow nobody to put you in a box. Can I get a Amen. You'll never make an intelligent decision if you if you if you carried away with different parties. If you carried away with your emotion, what did God say? What does God say about this particular thing? Pray to God. Ask God to give you clearance. Ask God to give you guidance. Let the voice of God be the final say so in what we do. Amen. And then you, you should have peace in, in your heart and mind. And, and Hebrews 6 1 he said. Let us um, stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamentals of, it, of importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing faith in God. So he was saying, we got we to gotta move on as a church. We got to move on to the, the, the things that are going to cause the church to be um, healthy and strong uh, mentally and in our emotion and every area of our life. We got to be a, a strong and healthy church. And there's two ways, that, three ways that we talked about you becoming, you can tell a strong, healthy church. What did we say last week? Uh, a healthy church is a teaching church. Not a church that's made, led by emotionalism. But a healthy church is what? A teaching church. Let's get, uh, we, we won't go there today, but a teaching church. In Matthew 28, he said, what? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Teaching them, right? Teaching them. Teaching them to obey my law. So if you're in a church that is not teaching you and just you being led by emotionalism, then that's not a healthy church. A healthy church will teach you what thus saith the Lord and give you the scriptures to back up what the word of God is saying. See, if we're going to survive what's coming ahead, you've got to be taught. And you've got to stand firm on what you've been taught. Don't allow yourself to be moved. Don't allow yourself to be shaken. So we said a healthy church is what? A teaching church. Let's go to uh, uh, 2 Timothy 4. 2 through 4. And this, see, uh, if, if, you, if you're not taught, and if you don't obey and stand immovable, always abounding in the things of God, and what you're taught, you're going to move. You're going to be moved by every wind of doctrine that comes before you. Them television stations, they are professionals. They know the Word of God tells us what we walk by faith and not by what? Sight. 
So they do the very opposite. They keep pumping fear into you. Fear comes, the more you hear and the more you become fearful, you gain faith in fearfulness. The more they keep telling you negative things, then you gain faith for the negative things. You can get scared. If we listen to the, 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 the television stations and all those supposed to be um, news stations, if we hear them, we would be afraid to come outside. Because they pump, pump so much negativity into our homes. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? How y'all with me today? I, I pray that you, you, you're just listening. Listening. And, and I pray that you take this and take it to heart. Look what, look what uh, Paul told Timothy. And this, is, this has been maybe almost 2,000 years ago. So that's why I said we're closer to these verses now than we have ever been before. Look what he told Timothy. Preach the word of God. What did he tell him? Preach the word of God. What, what did he say? Preach the word of God. Look what he said. Be persistent. Don't be inconsistent with your message. Uh, if you're going to be a healthy five-fold minister, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, an evangelist, and even a lay person, you got to constantly what proclaim the word of God consistently. You cannot change from what the word of God says. You got preachers that they done moved away from when God clearly said that lesbianism and homosexuality is an abomination before God. So they moved from that. They trying to, they trying to, and instead of them submitting to the word of God, they trying to get the word of God to submit to them. You don't think God is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end? He knew you. You can't say you were born like this. If he said you, if you, if he knew you were gonna be born like this, then his his word when he said he's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, that means he don't know everything. If he didn't see that you were gonna have this problem, and then he made a a, a, a law against it, then what else? We can't trust his word. So why would he make a prohibition against something and then centuries later have to change it? What? Then he's not the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. You see how we won't stand on the word? We start, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe so. No, no, no. But then that, that means I was born, I, I, an adulterer would have the same excuse. Adulterers could say, I was born this way. A thief could say, I was born this way. I was born to be a thief. I was born to be a murderer. I was born to be a pedophilia. You see how that don't make sense? But we won't stand on this. Preach the word of God. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently what? Correct. Patiently correct. Speak the truth of God in love. Yeah, you might be having challenges with this, but God is greater than any challenge you are having. That's preaching in love. Yeah, I'm a, I know you might have a propensity toward the same sex, but that's not God's best. Just like God delivered me from sin, that's a sin. He can deliver you from that too. You see why it's going to be harder to preach? Because it ain't gonna, this, this is not going to be favorable. They're already trying to take away your rights as a preacher. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with what? Good teaching. Teach what the Word of God says. Don't teach no other doctrine. See, a healthy church teaches what the Word says. Stand on the Word. See, we look at words in the Bible, the Lord say, what well, we're ambassadors, right? An ambassador is, is someone who represents a nation. And so if we're an ambassador, when somebody asks you, what do you think about this? Well, I'm an ambassador of Christ, and as an ambassador, I have to speak what my government say. The government of God says this. So you ain't mad with the ambassador, you ain't mad with the government that sent forth the ambassador to represent God. Can I get an amen? So when preachers hear people come in and ask them all these different questions, you just tell them, you're an ambassador of Christ. I can't tell you no more than God said. If you're mad at me, you're mad at his word. This is what his word say. If you kill me, you're just killing me because of his word. 
This is a healthy church. Number two, we said, did, that, did I get all, all the way down to verse four? Give me back. Um, verse three, it says, for the time is coming, the time is now. When people will no longer listen to right teaching. When people don't want to hear the right teaching, they go and hear what every other preacher. What, they, go, they try and gravitate toward what a preacher what, who is going to what, go along with what they say. But if all the preachers were saying the same thing, you would have nowhere to run. But the time is coming. The time is now. And the heat going to be what? Turned up. For a time is coming when people will know this is a hard message to preach. Because did y'all know as preachers you're going to be censored more and more? You're going to be blackballed? Do you understand what it was like for Elijah and them as preachers? You don't understand what Paul was saying when he was saying he feel like what that we've been put out there as a show for the world. That's why they want to preach. I seen this at an early age that what what, what, what the time was coming. God showed me this a long time ago. For time is coming when people will no longer listen to right teaching. They will follow their own desires. And will look for teachers who will what? Tell them whatever they want to hear. Now you see why Isaiah had to preach the message he called dumb dogs. That's a hard message to give the preachers in. The Lord told Isaiah to go and tell the preacher that he, he compared them to dumb dogs. He said they're dumb dogs because they won't even bark. He said you, a dog is supposed to warn when someone is coming. But he said it was acting like dogs that were mute. Couldn't bark. So a lot of us as preachers, five-fold ministers, we better stick together. We worried about denomination, but we better stick together and start praying for each other. And all of the small petty things that, the little small petty difference, I'm not saying we should go along with stuff we know is not scripture, but look, petty difference is time to put it aside. And we come together and pray. Next verse. I didn't even intend to go this way today, but Lord know what he's doing. They will reject the truth and follow strange myths. We're already, we already there. Nobody want to hear what's true. They want to follow all different kinds of myths. And then the next thing, so we said, church is a teaching church, so I'm teaching us now what's coming. The next thing we said, to be a healthy church, you got to let your members know that this, you're in warfare. Look at your neighbors and say, you're in warfare. warfare. This is a warfare. See, what happens, like I said last week, when Christians don't know that they're, that they're in a war, then when the devil comes against them, they think it's a strange thing. Peter said, Cause don't think it's a strange thing because the enemy is coming against you. You're in a war. So, so many churches are, are gave people the illusion that you will never go anything, do anything. That's not in the Word of God. The Word of God promised us that we will have trials and tests of life. But at the same time, we'll get through this. We'll come out victorious. Can I get a man? Amen. See, even, I'm, I'm going to quote this one too. Matthew eleven twelve. The Lord said, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent do what they take it by force. Those are warfare words. That means that as Christians, we're supposed to be taking territory for God. And when he said, the violent take us it by force, it didn't mean, the early Christians, they didn't come on the scene being physically violent. It was a spiritual force they had. They forced the kingdom of God in. And they were saying, and with their actions, for God I live and for God I will die. So they were thrown into lion's dens. They were made torches at night. 
All because what they were forcing the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. That's spiritual force. So you're in a war. When you start standing up for Christ, even more so in the upcoming days, you're going to be persecuted. Only those who are sincere in faith will make it past this. Now you see why I prayed yesterday and other times. I pray that a lot of my family members be dead and gone. Because the persecution will be so strong, you're going to renounce Christ if you're not strong in your faith. Can I get amen? Amen. Ephesians 6 12, give me that. It, it lets us see. We're in a war. You, we're in a war right now for Christians. Christianity has a war in, in America. They come against us. They war against us with laws that are passing against us to shut us up. They know the power of the name of Jesus. They don't care about you talking about Buddha, Muhammad, and Confucius. But they don't want you ever in the prayer in the name of Jesus. Because the devils tremble at that name. You can say all day I believe in God. But when you make that thing serious and say I believe in Jesus Christ. That's the difference man. Because there will be what many gods. The word God, that's a generic term. But when you be more specific and mention Jesus Christ, that's when all hell breaks loose. Can you get amen? Amen. We're in a war. Tell your neighbor you're in a war. You're in a war. Look at this verse. The Lord been showing me some things about the spirit realm that is going to help our prayer life. Look what Ephesians 6, 12 said. It said, for we are not fighting against what? People. See, the devil make us think we fight against people. But people are only being used as a puppet. In other words, the devil, in order to operate in this earth realm, he has to have a body. So he uses people. And when he uses people, he causes us to come against the people. We should be praying, Lord, break the whole... We know we're in a war. We say, Lord, we got to break that demonic stronghold off that person that is being used by what? The devil. But when we're not taught about warfare, we war against the people rather than the spirit that's in the people. Amen. Just like our governments in this country, this nation, we should be warring against the demonic governments that's ruling from the heavens and operating through leaders in this earth realm. Can I get an amen? Amen. So a healthy church teaches you about warfare. In other words, a healthy church teaches you about what's going on in the spirit realm and how it's affecting what we see. Apostle Paul said, all that you see, he, Paul said, that which we don't see is really that which is real. Are you with me? So I'm talking a little bit about warfare. I'm, I'm getting us to see what's going on in the spirit realm so we'll know how to be better warriors. That's the thing about Christians. They haven't been taught about warfare. You'd be surprised. You can tell Christians don't know about warfare. In other words, we're not a healthy church. We've been taught to look at numbers in the body of Christ. We, we, we make, earth, we make uh, what colloquialism like what? The majority rules. That's not godly. That's what man say. Majority doesn't rule. A person who understands warfare realize that you can put the right people in the right positions of leadership and that's what rules. Let me make it plain. Three, just say 3% of the population may be for abortion. 98% Ninety-five percent, ninety-seven percent, may be against abortion, but it's those three percent of those people 
who believe in abortion get in positions of power to overturn what the 97% think than the 3% is ruling. But our churches have been teaching us that politics are bad. What makes politics bad is wicked men and women in positions of power and authority. So when you do war, you're doing warfare when you put men and women in positions of power and authority who would carry out God's will. The devil has caused us, the Bible says the power of death and life is where? In the tongue. The devil has been getting us, as the majority of us Christians, and I used to think that too, that Christians shouldn't be involved in politics. You should be. Matter of fact, the politicians should be coming from the church. And if they've been taught what their role and responsibility is in society, they will rule what righteously. You see how we've been taught to think as Christians? And that's what's happening. That's why we're losing so many rights as Christians in this society for so long. We listen to the lie of the devil. All politicians are corrupt. That might be true for the majority, but how not? How, what? Why don't we start acting like God? When God, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. He didn't say what, what was going on. He didn't say darkness all around. He spoke what he wanted to see. We got to start speaking what we want to see take place. When we keep on pro proclaiming what we see. Be like God. Speak the opposite of what you want. Let there be righteous politicians. Let there be righteous men and women put in positions of power and authority because we have to live on this earth. Oh, what's going to be is going to be. You forgot. Jesus said, but we're fellow workers. We have a part in, in the matter of play too in this earth realm. Am I making sense? Yeah. I know this ain't a message, this a, this a, this, you know, one that's a, a cheery up, but it's something to make you think for what's coming. For we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities, against unseen world, against what? Those mighty powers. Now I want you to pay attention to this. He said, those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world this world system and against what wicked spirits notice he's saying spirits now he's not saying people that's why I like the word of God when it's really from the Holy Spirit you'll see the consistency in it Paul's still talking about what spirits he said we're being ruled by spirits in this earth realm from what in the heavenly realms from heavenly places so he's saying we are being ruled by, by demonic spirits in the heavenly realms. See, you got three, see, you got God, there's three different dimensions. You got the third heaven is where God is. The other heavenly realms is the second realm where the, where the, 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 the evil spirits take it over. Then you got the natural realms of the sky. So he's saying we've been ruled from the second realm. By demonic spirits affecting chains and things on the earth, taking over people's bodies. Put it like that. Taking over people's body who are in positions of leadership and what mess changing up what our world system uh, the systems of the world over the control of the systems of the world. Now keep that in mind. Let's go to Judges 5:20. Remember now, Paul said that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not actually fighting against people. We're fighting against what? Demonic spirits in the spirit realm. Now you remember when you read the Word of God, that's why the more you read the Word of God, if you keep reading the Word of God through and through each year, God will bring back to your remembered scriptures that tie into what He's trying to get you to teach. 
or what he's trying to get you to see. But if you're not reading the Word of God, how can he bring back to your memory scriptures that's going to help you understand what's going on in the spirit realm? Can I get amen? amen? Now, look at this. The backdrop of this verse is Judges 5.20. The nation of Israel, they were being attacked by a particular nation. And they did, they began to pray to God. Because the nations that they were fighting against were a lot of times more powerful than Israel. So they needed some heavenly help. And so, now, this verse is said in Judges 5.20, the stars fall from heaven. See, a lot of times we look at the word stars, it's not always talking about the natural stars. This warfare, I'm telling you, this, the church is supposed to teach war. I'm on the second one, teaching warfare. So, now, this verse is saying the same thing Ephesians 6.12 said, what we just read. He said, now, when they prayed, he said, the stars fall from heaven. You ever thought a star, when you look it up in the dictionary, the Hebrew Bible also means angel? It means principality. So he said, the heavenly government fought for Israel. Remember the devil, everything the devil do is opposite of God. When Paul said, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against wickedness, so... It, there's wicked stars representing wicked angels, but the, the, the word stars, if you go home and look at it in your strong concordance, that also means a prince, a ruler. Ruling spirit beings in the heaven. So when the devil comes against you, when you pray, your prayers are what? Being fought against by demonic forces. The stars fall from heaven. The stars in their orbits fall for, for Sisera. Sisera was the leader. So he said, now, when the saints of God prayed, that's why it ties in with St. Chronicles now. Yeah, everybody knows St. Chronicles 7, 14. He said, if my people call by name. So his people called by their name because the enemies were too strong for them. But God fought for them in the spirit realm. Now let's make it natural. A lot of your blessings ain't came to you because it has never been worn in the spirit realm yet. In order for your blessings or your breakthrough to come, it's got to be defeated in the spirit realm first. And if you read further on in the scripture, it says they fought in the heavens and then once the battle was decided and once God's heavenly angels took over, and destroyed the demonic principalities, then they had success on earth. So now we see the, what the power of our prayers. Tell your neighbor, don't give up on your prayers. There's a war going on in heaven. See, when you send prayers up, the devil trying to make sure it never get to the third heaven. He trying to do battle so your prayers will never reach God. But that's why your church has to teach you about warfare. The more you understand warfare, the more you will become a praying church. And the more victories you will win. I thank God that this church is a full of intercessors. When you intercede and you're warring in the, in the heavens so we can get what a breakthrough on earth. A lot of breakthroughs that we got in this church would have never got if y'all wouldn't warn in the spirit. That verse right there, it ought to be crystal clear to us. Another verse. Let's go to John 151. Jesus said it this way. Remember, there's nothing in scripture that has never been said. It's just said in a different way. In other words, if you didn't understand that scripture, now see that word right there, orbits? See that word orbits? That means highway. A roadway. So when you pray in, in the spirit, your prayers go up. We're talking warfare. Remember, a healthy church teaches warfare. When your prayers go up to God, then what? Your, the, then Hebrews 1.14 tells us that 
The angels are what men spirits, ministering spirits for the saints. They begin to war. And then what? They come from heaven. God send them from heaven to do battle. So your prayers will become reality. When you send your prayers up for healing, the devil try to make sure it never stay in your heart long enough to get your breakthrough. And you'll give up. So the devil on this from the heaven they send you, you're not healed, you're not healed, you're not healed. But then when faith kicks in, the angel of God come in and give you faith, give you faith and grace, then you start believing. But at first you'll never get your breakthrough on earth until you get your breakthrough in heaven. It's gonna be your mind. Your mind and then God is fighting on your behalf. A lot of us haven't got our breakthroughs on earth because it's not settled in our mind. Is this making sense? See, faith calls them to fight stronger for you. If you keep your faith, the, the, the angels keep warring on your behalf. That's why the angels said, I come for your words. They don't operate by your emotions. They come by the word of God. Look what Jesus said. Aren't we joining us with Jesus? What Jesus was able to claim, we are able to claim. Because we are his body, his arms, and feet in the earth realm. Right? He said we're joining arms with him. And then one scripture said we're fellow workers with him. Look what Jesus said to Nathaniel. When Nathaniel was just, he was fascinated by because Jesus gave him a word of knowledge. Jesus said, man, I saw you sitting on the tree over there. Nathan said, man, now I know you're the Messiah. Jesus said, hey, if, you, if you've been impressed with that, then Jesus told this verse. Then he said, the truth is, you will all see heaven open and the angels of God doing what? Going what? Up and down upon the Son of Man. In other words, we've been receiving instructions and directions from me as I pray. Things from heaven come, the signs and the wonders and the miracles of what taking place on the earth realm. Just like we read in, in Judges 5, they call it an orbit, but if you look up the word, it's a highway. So now when you, Jesus said, you ain't seen nothing, man. My prayers and the anointing upon my life is going to cause the angels to what minister for me in the earth realm. Same thing happening in your prayers. It causes the prayers, your prayers to minister in this earth realm to you. Your prayers go up. Angels fight for you and the manifestation of your prayers come back down. Just like they did for Jesus. Just like they did for every saint of God. But you, if you don't know this, then what? You will not claim it. What you don't know, you can't possess. Is this making sense? This is teaching about warfare. Because if you don't teach a Christian about warfare, he'll um he'll give up. And last but not least, I'm going to show you another warfare uh, scripture. I'm going to quote it. Remember, the devil put so much warfare on you, and this is why Christians you have to know about warfare. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, you're going to have War after war. It could be a spiritual battle. It could be a physical battle. And they, the devil will come at you so hard in your flesh or in your body or whatever way he comes in your mind, will, emotions or whatever, even in your finances. You'll start to doubt that you're in, in God. You'll start thinking you've done something wrong. But that's why we must teach about warfare. So many Christians, they believe that, hey man, I don't know whether I'm saved, the devil coming so hard. But you, as, as saints of God, we have to let them know that this, this, that's normal. That's, the warfare is normal. It's a normal thing among Christians. And Apostle Paul, he, he said it, um, let's, let's, the last verse, Apostle Paul said it this way. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, I think. This is Apostle Paul. Remember, we didn't get to the third one today. Every healthy church needs to teach you about that you should be a teaching church, teaching you the Word of God, the honor of those who read the Word of God. And the second one we own today is warfare. Every healthy church 
is supposed to teach you about warfare. Look at Paul. Look at the struggles he had, and he was a Christian. Romans seven eighteen. And I know that nothing good lives in me. Now I want to skip, skip back up to verse fourteen. So the trouble is not the law, for it is the spiritual and for it is spiritually good. The trouble lives with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. See? As a Christian, you're going to struggle at first, and you're going to struggle all throughout your life with this type of warfare in your body. And the devil can come at you so hard, you'll start condemning yourself. You'll think that you're no longer a Christian, but you're just having warfare, and we're going to see how to get delivered from it. Amen? He said, I want, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. I love this person, but then my flesh keeps kicking in. And then you go to a Christian and say, I don't know, Sister Darth, I'm still saved. And you have to tell them, yeah, you're still saved, you're going to a war. You know you're saved because it's troubling your spirit. A person that's not saved, they, would, they wouldn't care one way or the other. So you have to let them know this, this is doing warfare. Let's pray together. Then he went on to say, but if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree the law is good. I know the word of God is good, but I'm, I'm still, the, the, that Bible's still calling me. I still want to take some things from people. You tell them, brother, that's healthy, God, this too shall pass. That's why we have to what strengthen each other. And help each other do what goes through warfare. Verse 17. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. We all still got some residue on us from the whole life that try to what? Well up. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Verse 21. I have discovered this principle. Says somebody said, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. See, God is the one that's going to deliver us from any warfare that we're going through. We got to tell you that you have to turn it over to the Lord. See, too many people trying to war... In their own power. You can't, you, can't, you can't make the breakthrough in your own power. You can't make the deliverance in your own power. See, as Christians, you've got to be taught that warfare, the victory comes through Jesus Christ. A lot of people trying to do it in their own strength. And he went on to say, he said, That when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is a, another power. I tell you, there's another, another power. Greater is he that is in me is he that is than in he me. that is in the world. That's the other power he's talking about. See, a lot of times you got to turn it over to the other power that is greater than you. Within me that is at war with my mind. That, that This power makes me... Uh, let me read that again. I love the law, the God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war. That's not the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this what, life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. This is the power we're talking about. Thank God the answer is in what Jesus Christ our Lord, so you see how it is? In my mind, I really don't want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. I like the King James Version, but he said, thanks be to God. See, Christ is the answer. There's a war that is warring after your flesh, but it's not stronger than what? The Holy Spirit. And so when you're doing warfare, you got to turn what the battle over to the Lord. 
Tell your neighbor, this is not your battle, it's the Lord's. This is not your battle, it's the Lord's. So you have to turn it over to Him. Yeah, Let us stand to our feet. Yeah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for your word, O oh God, and we pray that you continue to teach us uh, principles and precepts on how to be a strong, healthy church. Lord, let our heart and our spirit man love and desire teaching, Lord. Teach us, Lord, more and more about your word. Teach us how to obey your word. Teach us how to submit to your word, Lord. And Lord, help our spirit man to love truth when we hear it. Father, we also pray that you continue to strengthen us and help us to understand more and more what warfare really is. And Lord, teach us how to depend upon the Holy Spirit as our grace and everything that we need to cause us to be victorious in our battles against uh, our mind, against our will, against our emotions, and against our body, oh God. Whatever way the enemy comes to do battle, Lord, and teach us how to trust in the Holy Spirit. For Lord, we know that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And Father, also bless us today as we leave this place, but never from your presence, Lord, as we go out into the marketplaces today, O oh God. Strengthen us and comfort us and give us the spirit of wisdom, O oh God, to win those that are lost, backsliding, and those that are hurting you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.